bridge the truth to life Introduce us to God Bridge the truth to life We need God in More than ever More than ever chapter 6. Let me project verse 31. Therefore do not worry saying what shall we eat, what shall we drink, what shall we wear. <laughs> Three things we, we care about. <laughs> verse 32, 32. For after these things, brethren, that's a phrase, do the Gentiles seek. But seek ye first. Now this is a very simple scripture. Is Jesus saying to us that we should not seek at all those things? No. But seek ye it means they seek you only. Seek you first. The kingdom or the reign of God. Look for his reign over your life. Let God be in charge. And his righteousness or the right things. Or what God calls right. Then all these things shall be added to you. You, you will pursue them. But God will, have them, God will give them to you. He will give them to you. Seek you first. The kingdom of God and all. And his righteousness and all this is so how can we make God first? That's what Christ said here. Seek ye first. How can I make God my pursuit? Above all other things. That's why I say it's very difficult. Very difficult to teach. To make God first. Most of us haven't made God first. Most of us here tonight. God is not first. How can I get to the point in my life where God is first? What must I do? And people must know that in this guy's life, God is first. Oh, does it mean I must heed the full time call? Oh, no. That's the hero. There are some people that do full time ministry humor, and God is not first in their lives. They go into ministry even for bread, they go into ministry even for money, they go to church for comfort. And so people tend to think because they work in church, then God is first. No, that God is not first. Brethren, I am with a somber heart trying to share my heartbeat with you today that we haven't placed God first. In fact, on our priority or preference scale tonight, most people, if they're going to check it, God's going to open a heart. God is probably third, fourth, maybe fifth. Our career work first. Our family probably second. Money probably third. There may be faith and God fourth or fifth. And that's why it's difficult to be a Christian. People don't know it. Christianity is not just uh, some going to church. It's not. Unfortunately, many of us in born again Christian churches don't even know that. We don't know that. It's a very tough thing to do. To be a Christian is to actually say practically, you want to put God first in your life. Put God first. So nothing else will compete for his love in your heart. And that's why in Revelation chapter 3, let's go to that passage which we all know very well. It tells us three kinds of love that man can ever have in life. Three kinds of expressions of love. Read for me from verse number 14. The angel of the church of Laodicea write, These things said, the amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Verse 15 now says what? I know your works. Now this is amazing, Pastor Funke. Your works. He said works. That thou art neither cold nor hot. That means that I cold works, there are hot works, and there are lukewarm works. He said, I know your works. Now, put your finger on verse 15. I know your works. So, if you want to put it your service, the way you serve me, the Greek word is hergo, the way you serve me, the way you work for me, the way you labor for me. I know your work. And when I see the way you work for me, you know you have many staff in your office, Pastor Pedro. I have many staff in my office. And in my office, I have many staff. I have those that work for Fota coldly. I have those that work for Fota hotly. 
and I have those that are just complacent in between. My staff. They are working. Because when he says, I know your works, you can't do that, that means it's not working. They are working in church. Their relationship with God, because I know your relationship with me. It can be either cold or hot. So don't think he's saying that when you are cold, it means you have no work. No, you are working, but coldly. Just like the head usher will say, ah, Martins, Lawrence, I have ushers in my church, sir. I can't depend on this one. This one is the usher, but it's a cold usher. The choir master will say, sir, I have choir members, but this one is a choir member, but it's a cold choir member. This one is hot. Remember he say, Rehazas is there before time. Hot, hot, very hot, dependable. So God, Jesus, is giving us a praise and evaluation. I know your works. All of us here. You are either, you say you are neither cold nor hot. That means there are three levels. Cold, hot, and lukewarm. So ask yourself, which one are you? Just, just on your own. Ask yourself, how do I know hot Christians? Is there, I'm going to show you now. So you can know, you see, this is a matter of you and I. Usually I preach this message at the end of the year. Why can't we start at the beginning of the year? To ask ourselves, how have I been faring with God? Because it's a love relationship. Love relationship, me and God. So sometimes it affects us. I'm telling you why it affects us. I hope my, my eyes block and my shakol is ready. Let me find out for them. Because I want to show you an example of love. Let me find out them. I want to have hot shakol, hot coals of fire and eyes block. So I can do some experiments here before you all. Are you ready for it? Go back, verse 15. Verse 15. This is why I'm always careful. I wish you were cold or hot. Look at verse 16. So then, because you are lukewarm, so that's the third one. There's hot love or hot works. Cold love or cold works. Yes or no? And there's lukewarm. Yes or no? Now, because you are lukewarm and neither cold or in between cold and hot. You get it? I will vomit you out of my mouth. I don't like you. So I don't even mind a cold person why I make him hot. I don't even mind a hot person why I'll sustain his heat. But a cold, a lukewarm person, I don't want to see. So of the three, listen to me, of the three, humanly speaking, humanly speaking, our relationship with ourselves, some of us may not mind lukewarm because I don't want a very hot meal. It will burn my tongue. I don't like eating cold meal. I say, go and microwave it. But I like my food to be warm. They say, hey, sweetheart, go and let me warm my food. So naturally, human nature is different from spiritual nature. Human nature will like warm things. How many of you agree with me? Yeah. You don't get it. Can I tell you? Not too cold, not too hot. In between. We in the office, when you are too hot, talking, talking. Why are you always talking? Leave them alone now. Just stay there. Must you be not talking in the office? No, we don't like people that are just always aggressive. Why are you aggressive? Just stay there. You must you be anyone? I want to kill yourself. We like to be warm. We don't like to be here or there. People don't know where we belong. We just like to stay in the... We don't like to offend people or embrace people. We just be in the... We call it what? No, no, we call it what? That's that, you forgot that English word. Seth, balance. It's like a balance. Balance your life. Balance your... If you go that way, it's too hot. Go this way, it's too cold. Leave a... You know you are talking about yourself. Leave it. So when you see look, it's too aggressive. Pastor, you are too aggressive in church. Stick it. When it's too cold, come to church. We just like a balanced life. And that is humanly. But Christ says, I don't like cold people. I don't like hot people. I like, I don't mind both. I, I hate lukewarm. Let us know where you are. Who is on the left side? I want to know. Many places in the Bible, I don't understand why God said it. God says, if you are going to serve me, serve me. If you will not, go there. Let us know where you are. Bring that thing for me. So you can see, I was looking at this issue today. Don't let it fall down. This is, I told them to get me very, very odd. Why is the ice block? Give me another bowl. Okay, brethren, look at this. These are cubes. This is cold, yes or no? Yes. If you put this cold here, yes. with time it will melt. So, cold Christians, sometimes in the midst of very hot Christians, may not have very strong effect. I catch this coal, very hot, I can't touch it. I put it in here. Huh? It will kill the fire. 
quench not the spirit. No matter how hot you are, if you stay in the midst of cold Christians, you'll be cold. That's why I'm always afraid of those that call my friends now. If I go and pick some pastors who preach prosperity and they preach lying, and I'm hot and they are cold, and I pick myself and I say, let's be friends, and I begin to relate with them, it's only a matter of time. They'll kill my fire, kill my zeal, kill my heat. No matter how hot you are, stay around hot people. He that walks with the wise shall be wise. So keep yourself warm. Make sure the person near you is hot. To keep yourself warm, the next person beside you must be. If you have seen marriages destroyed because of this principle, very hot Christian man in a very cold unbeliever. Mm. That boy stopped coming to church. With time, it's only a matter of time, the man backslides. Why? Because the wife is influencing the, the guy. Church, 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 church. My wife and I were talking about one for somebody a few months ago. The young man will stop going to church. It's only a matter of time. I said, Funke, I've not been seeing this guy in church. It's his wife. Hey, let us get the man, a good heart believer as a friend. Heart believer, heart. Why can't the man influence his own wife? Or why can't the woman influence her husband? It's, it's the way all that way around. And it's always easy because I was wondering, you see this thing is very good now. The old is there's nothing there. I was wondering, how come of these two, which is only more powerful, fire or water? An engineer is saying it depends on quantity <laughs> and intensity. <laughs> intensity. Uh, you know, Joe. Intensity. <laughs> eh? You can see this, what, this thing can be hotter when you blow it. The fact that it's like this doesn't mean it will continue to be hot. When they stay together, they keep themselves warm. But if I take one of these out in isolation to this place, it will get cold faster than in here. I'm teaching you principles of faith. Whenever a hot Christian stays alone in isolation, not joining prayer meeting, not going to Bible study, not doing this, you will get cold before you say Jack. You can only sustain your warmth when you are within your mirror, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves. Do you get it? Yeah, I won't go to the for one year. You will be cold in one year. Go and try it. You'll be cold. It is when we are together, Pedro, like this. Those days, my friends, Ndubusi, Gideon, Tola, when we come together for hours, we are blasting in tongues. Young people, we just love to come together to pray in tongues. They call those jobless, useless men. But look at us today, we're all great. Just praying in tongues together. Why some are just going to begin to frolic around with women and they ruin their lives? That's why you say our daughters become prostitutes while they change friends. If you move with people that are this cold, this is, this is free. Eh? You'll be cold. You know, say, Reverend, it's not, no, it's not true. It's not true. I'm hot. They cannot change me. Ah. We'll take one like this. Eh? Can you see? Pastor P, Pastor Funke, I can't even find that ice block. Because it's just one isolation. If I put all this ice block here now, uh, uh, you'll see fire. You'll see battle. All this one will kill this. Yes. Yes. That's why people don't understand when God says, Come ye out and be ye separate. God was saying that we must preach and teach some level of isolation together like this. Not to say we will not relate to people at all in the world. And be separate. That's what it means. That come because if you stay there every time and care on taking, you become cold. I want this to continue to be hot. My prayer is that God, I am this tiny little bit here. I'm very hot, but where I can sustain my heat, it's going to be to be amongst people like me, and hoping that God, we can begin to also get some external heat. <sighs> So we can be hotter and hotter and then show we're not cold. And anybody that comes amongst us, if it's a, a cold thing, we say you will catch fire. If I put wood in here, I will catch fire. If I put wood in here, if I get the wood and put it in here, you will catch fire. So if you get near me, you will catch fire. But also be very careful. I don't want to take my, my hotness to a level that I can say, I don't care. I cannot be anymore. Let me go and stay with these people here. And I will not come. I will leave this place for the next one year. I'll be staying here. I'll be fellowshipping here. <laughs> you are gone. 
He has fellow goating, not fellowshipping. Clap for Jesus. Let's look it up. Does that make sense? Does it make sense? Do you get my illustration? So you can understand when I keep saying we must be zealous. Now, how do I intend sustain my intensity? Zeal! Zeal can be quenched. If you don't do anything about your state, you will be called on a matter of time. I'm telling you. People think that uh, once you are out, let me tell you, it's only once that Christ set the church on fire. Acts chapter 2. Only once. They had to sustain the fire with their prayer life. The church was born with fire. You didn't see that Pentecost every second. Once it set them on fire, it was a responsibility to keep burning, to make sure they don't get cold. They, were, they kept praying together, they kept blessing in tongues, they kept doing God's work, so that fire will not be cold. So Christ did not keep setting the church on fire. Only once in the Bible, Acts 2. After Acts 2, there was no fire on their head anymore. And after a while, when religion crept in, tradition crept in, you saw how the church became cold. Politics crept in. The same zeal with which Peter started, he didn't have that zeal anymore at some point. He now said, no, Lord. I am concerned with this church and our believers. I'm not putting God first. Some of us think zeal will just come automatically. No, it doesn't. Christ said it there, I want you to be hot. For you to know how he said it, go back to that Revelation chapter 3. Because you say I'm rich, because I have wealth, I have need of nothing, do not know what, that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Next verse. I counsel you to buy of me gold, refined in the fire, that you may be rich, white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of thy nakedness may not be revealed, and not thine eyes with thy soul, that you may see. Look at the next verse. As many as I love, I want and chasten. Therefore, be one. So that tells you which of the two Christ preferred, hot. Me, I said I would either cold or hot. He now gives us the real counsel. Therefore, be what? That means be hot. Simple directive. I don't need to explain this to you. Be zealous. Be zealous. That's what they're asking to do. This is a church. Now, and they had works. I know your works, but your works lack zeal. Don't forget, he said, I know your works. Then in the verse 19, be zealous. That means your works lack zeal. So if zeal is not the work. Zeal is the way you do the work. Oh, you missed that. Zeal is not the work, humor. Zeal is the way you do the work. I know your works, but not see zeal behind those works. God first. God first. We put every other thing last. But well, you know, we have a way, earnest, of trying to quench. And that's why that scripture where Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, he said, quench not the spirit. Very powerful, quench not. The zeal can be quenched. I just told you you can quench it. Quench not. Now, there are some testimonies I've heard that makes me know that some people have placed God first. Those that put God first, their prayers are known. You see, you will know if God is first in your life. Your prayer point is the first thing that we know. In First Kings chapter three, when God came to Solomon, God asked him, Solomon, ask me anything you want. I think verse eleven or twelve, verse eight, nine, ten. He asked God for wisdom to just do His will, to do God's will. I just want to do, make you happy. I want to rule your people well. God said, "What?" In verse eleven, from the things you have asked from me, it shows you make me first in your life. Ah, ah. Because you've done this, you see, because you've asked this thing, you have not asked for long life that others will ask for. In my inbox, I have long life request. I have riches for themselves request. I have life of their enemies. So God said, all oh, these are the requests and you to. But for the first time, somebody is making me first. Your request reveals who you are. When was the last time you and I sat down to pray and said, God, please give me wisdom to know you more. Lord, show yourself to me. That's why sometimes I, I, I am always considering young people around me that I know are hot for Christ. I want to say, let's talk about Christ. I want the things that excite me. Can we come and discuss how can we take soon for God? 
How can we get more soul see? How can we touch unbelievers? How can we have a Samaritan project? How can we reach people that we consider as Muslims and prostitutes? How can we help them, lift them? How can we be of use? How can we bring Christ's fragrance to all men around us? How can men look at us as a passive Christ in you? When I look at you and hear you, I smell the fragrance of love. Christ's love. Every other thing does not matter to me. That's why Joshua said in Joshua 24, verse 14 to 15, I don't know about you guys, though. You can go and choose who, who's, which God you will serve. Whether the gods of the Amorites, the gods of the Jebusites, and the other side of the river Jordan, or oh God. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The man made it clearly. No, I'm the leader, but I'm telling you, my, this is my personal decision based on my conviction. It's me, God first. All the things come second to God first. Sir, you clean your clothing? Yes. Your food? Yes. Your life? Yes. Your body? Yes. Every other thing is secondary. Every other thing is secondary. God first. We must all get to that point where we can put God first. Where we can make commitments this year and say, wait a minute, how old am I? How many more years do I have to live? What am I living for? Ask yourself, what am I living for? Tell yourself, what, okay, what am I living for? Money? What, wait, 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 wait. What are you living for? What are you living for? If it's not God first. We have to get to the point where we raise our, our intensity for God. We have to deliberate. By the way, brethren, nobody will raise it for you. You have to raise it yourself. Nobody becomes hot accidentally. Pastor Kasali, you know, after that message, I don't know what to mean. I didn't do anything, you know. I just found myself becoming hot. I just started going to church more. No, you decided to go to church. You decided to be hot. You made up your mind to say, look, I want to increase my love for God. Like you increase for your spouse. You don't say, I don't know. I just found myself just, I didn't do anything. I just found love for my wife increasing. No, it's not. You have to say, I want to increase my love for my spouse. I'll buy a card every day of this year till December. It's a decision of yourself. I didn't buy it all. I was just buying a card. I don't know how a card. A card has not been bought by me. <laughs> it's a decision. And then I know that sometimes what I just illustrated here is very, very powerful. The cold ones can try to kill the cold. You get the point? So you better be careful uh, the kind of people that you also relate with. Because if you go and talk to the person that is very, 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 very cold, say, I want to come to every, every day of the week. You want to kill yourself? You better take it easy. Look, 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 look. You know there is high blood pressure. By the time they finish all the cases, health cases, they put fear in your heart. Psalm 69 verse 9 says, The zeal of the Lord's house has consumed me. I like the way Agai puts it, talking about those that want to serve God and make God first. Agai chapter 1 verse 2 to 11. He says, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in the sealed houses and these house lying ways? Verse 5. Now therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much. You brought in little. You eat, you have not enough. You drink, you are not filled with drink. You clothe you, but there's no more warm. And he that earn wages, earn wages to put it in a in bag with holes. Thus said the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. He's telling you sometimes the things happening to your life. Check it though. Check it. It may be because of the way you have treated my things. I'm not writing this there. Look at what God said. You sold me so much, you brought in so little. You've done this, you've not gotten back. You've done that. Uh, consider your ways. Lord, which way again? Your ways with me. Because you love your life. Your ways with me. Not with yourself. Because I know you love yourself more. The way you treat your house. Consider your ways with me. I'm trying to point you to the problem. This may be the problem. It's a very tough message. People don't like me to say that their present condition could be as a result of how they've treated the things of God. Well, I'm reading the Bible. Consider your ways. He said it there. Consider your ways, your attitude towards the things of God. Your approach towards God's house, God's altar, God's presence, God's place. God, you've been blessed by that message. However, I would like to get something from you. I love feedbacks a lot. Communication is not just telling something, also about receiving the feedback. I would like to hear from you, read from you, perhaps even call me. There are numbers on the screen right now, and my email address is right now on the screen. Guess what? That email address gets directly to my box 
We have been linked to me. I promise you, I will reply you. Should you have questions about the message, issues you want me to probably consider, maybe topics you want me to preach about, or perhaps also to address during one of my sermons, kindly send me a mail now. I love feedbacks. I would love to hear from you. And hey, if you're out there, you're not born again. You want to give your life to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You have to do it. You don't have to just turn off this dial without giving your life to Christ. That's all. That's why we're here, to lead men to Christ. Call us. We'll send you something. We'll lead you to Christ. There are many counselors right now waiting right on the other side, waiting to hear from you, waiting to call you, to pray with you, and also to counsel you. We hope to be here again next week, the same channel, the same time. Please make it a date with us. And if you are anywhere in our church branches, near our own communities, Zulere, Aja, probably Festac, and as well Abuja, worship with any of the Fota churches. God bless you. God keep you. And God will always preserve you. Thank you. Bye-bye.